Hi, I'm Trisha at Club Scrap. Welcome to the Woodland Special Edition Page Kit Assembly Workshop. We're gonna be making eight gorgeous pages together today and I can't wait to get started. I've got my printed instructions here. You can find these on our website under the resources tab, instructions, and then you have to go to the special editions section. And make sure you're working with a Woodland and not Woodland Christmas. This is actually a little bit of a remix, kind of, of our Christmas collection, but we're just calling it Woodland and it is gorgeous. I'm also using my accordion pocket file. This is an, a handmade item and I do have a workshop to help you make one of these for yourself from just uh, 12 by 12 sheets of paper. And it has four pockets to help us stay organized. So everything for uh, the pairs, individual pairs of layouts will go into the individual pockets. And then of course I'm using my Fiskars guillotine trimmer. I've said it a thousand times, but if you don't have this, do yourself a favor and grab one for yourself. You won't regret it. It's just a wonderful little workhorse. It's very accurate and a very reasonably priced. So pick one up. And for now, we're just going to be working with the uh, papers. So I'm gonna take all the embellishments that came in the kit and set those aside. The embellishments are so wonderful. Now let's gather up the stack of papers and I like to hold it upright so I can look at it from the top and find what I'm looking for. It's always hard to label the prints. We're calling, we're calling this one with the fox on it. We're creatively calling that the fox print. So let's take one of those and I'm gonna put it face down on my trimmer base followed by the creatively named raccoon print. I decided to call him the raccoon print for obvious reasons also. Take one of those and put it face down. And then I want you to find the teal. Now there is a light blue, so make sure you're grabbing the darker color of teal. And then one of the green plain papers in here. Just one of those. Next, you're gonna find the light blue and grab both of those. So two light blue. One. As the weather gets dry in Wisconsin, my hands do as well. And then one brown. And then the brown is just a really nice, heavy stock. Love that. Actually, two brown. Grab the next one as well. Two brown. And then, usually on the back of the stack, Deb collates the cut apart. So we're looking for the one that has the two really beautiful teal and gray borders here on the right. Put that face down, followed by the one with the red border. That'll go face down. Next, take the other fox print. You're getting the face down pattern here. <laughs> and then a green. Two yellow, and there should just be two there. Two yellow. Two brick. One remaining teal and the remaining raccoon print face down. And uh, the whole thing is in reverse now. So turn everything back over. So we're back to where we started with our little fox print. And a big shout out to our very own Julie Heyer. Her daughter Shannon uh, is the talent behind a lot of the critters we've added to this kit, including our cute little stout here and our chickadee, the feather, the rabbit, the raccoon, the deer. I, the elk, maybe? I can't remember. She added a ton of uh, beautiful uh, hand-done watercolor art to this kit. So shout out to Shannon. Uh, she's a senior in high school this year, and it's just awesome to give her a chance to build her portfolio while blessing us with her talent. Okay, so we're going to take that fox print, put it right side up into the trimmer, and we'll cut at nine and three quarters. If you're new to the trimmer, just make sure your paper is flush at top. And the columns represent a quarter, so it's easy if you find the whole number nine and count three columns to the left, going toward the ten. That's nine and three quarters. And then four and three quarters. And two and three quarters. Notice also that I'm letting the paper pile up, and I'm also holding down the clear bar before every cut. So this first strip, it just has the chickadee on it here. That's gonna go in three and four. When you place 12 inch pieces into the uh, accordion pocket file, just make sure they're angling out to one side or the other so that you can still see the pocket labels. And then we have a, more of a, a narrow strip here with just him on it, so cute. That goes in one and two. This wider piece here, five and six. And then the piece from the end with the pine cones, three and four. Next, we're going to take this piece and place it in the trimmer so that the raccoon is on the lower right corner. And we'll cut at nine. Again, stabilize on that clear bar. 
and then all the way down to three. This piece goes in pocket five and six. And then take this middle section here, we'll trim it horizontally at eight and four. Gather up all the rest of the pieces of paper. So you got three the same here, plus one more narrow strip. And this all goes in pocket five and six. Moving on to step three, got a nice easy one for you with this teal. So grab the next paper on the sorted stack and trim it at six. Stack up the two strips. We'll trim at eight and four. The trimmer is really capable of trimming easily two sheets of cover weight paper. Now you've got six pieces the same, two at a time. Take uh, two of them will go in pocket one and two. Two of them go in three and four, and two go in seven and eight. What's next? Take one sheet of green and we're going to make some real narrow pieces here so we'll start out at 11 and three quarters 11 and a half two really narrow pieces then 10 and a half and six and a quarter always remembering to stabilize on that clear bar now rotate we'll cut at eight and a half and four and a quarter Gather the two rectangles that are the same, going in pocket five and six. And then there's a narrow strip here. We'll trim horizontally at six and three. Take two of the rectangles that are now the same as well, and those go in pocket five and six. And you did create a real small little scrap. You can... Uh, Try to find a home for it or set it aside in your scrap pile and then this next strip it's four and a quarter by 12 right now we'll cut at five and three quarters and then i want you to just rotate this piece so it's vertical and cut at three and three quarters and this piece and then the larger one as well goes in five and six and there is a, a longer strip here that's a scrap and this wider uh, strip goes in seven and eight. And the two really skinny strips are placed in pocket five and six. There's a feature on YouTube that if I'm going too fast, you can uh, reduce the playback speed and the settings to like 0.75 to slow me down a little bit. It's real slow. So, you know, you'd be the judge. <laughs> Otherwise, um, to beginners, you're, you're going to um, work hard to keep up. But once you get the hang of this, how this works on a monthly basis, uh, you'll follow along very easily. Our first number here is 10 and a quarter on one sheet of the light blue. Make sure you just have one sheet. They both get trimmed differently. So again, that's 10 and a quarter, six and a quarter, and then a rotation, 11 and a quarter, eight and a half, four and a quarter. Okay, so take these two that are the same. They're gonna go in one and two. And then there's a narrow rectangle that's going to be placed in seven and eight. We've got this other little skinny blue strip. I didn't use that. I know it's really unusual for me to have all these scraps. <laughs> and then this next strip will cut at six. We're just cutting that in half and both pieces in seven and eight. This wider strip here, seven and eight as well. Now the other sheet of blue, this one will trim just right out of the gates at six and a quarter. We're basically trimming photo mats. They weren't provided, so we have to trim them. <laughs> then we'll cut at eight and a half and four and a quarter. And that gives us two photo mats going in pocket three and four. And the rectangle will trim again at six and three. One of these rectangles goes in one and two, and the other in seven and eight. Grab the strip here, and there was a little scrap, by the way. I didn't use him. Uh, now we're gonna go 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. 
and that creates three rectangles that are the same size and they all three go in pocket three and four but I did use this one we're gonna place him in pocket one and two and move on to the brown just take one you do have two in the pile so take one and we'll trim at 11 nine and a half and six and a quarter that six and a quarter is very popular <laughs> rotate so is this trim at eight and a half and four and a quarter these two pieces that are the same seven and eight and then we're going to do this trick again I trim the rectangle at six and three We've got two rectangles here going in five and six and a tiny little scrap for the pile. The next strip, this is uh, three and a quarter by 12. We'll cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. I've made three rectangles. They should be the same. Those are going to go in seven and eight. And there is this small piece that uh, came off the end. We are using that in seven and eight as well. And because you're tuning into the uh, video workshop, I'm gonna tell you, these are gonna be trimmed into three quarter inch squares. So it's currently three quarters wide. I need a bunch of pieces that are three quarters. So basically what I do for that is just go from, now I'm at three quarters. So just go three columns to the left. And notice I'm holding it like below the inch markings. It's a little hard if I go all the way up to the top. So let's count columns. One, two, three, level it up on the line and slice. One, two, three. And because I can just hold on that clear bar and then I can trim at one to get another three quarter and I can trim at three quarters. And look at even a slice that small is no problem. And so what that gave me was three little, four squares actually, and a tiny scrap. So I'm gonna put all of these in pocket seven and eight like this. That's your bonus material. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, we've got some strips here. The wider of the two, seven and eight, and the narrower goes in five and six. And we're gonna move on to the other sheet of brown. Uh, this time we'll trim at 11 and three quarters. <laughs> 11 and a half, 10 and a quarter, nine, seven and a half, and four. <laughs> That's a lot of slices there. Rotate the four by 12, we'll cut it at six. And these two matching pieces, one and two. Next, let's turn this into some uh, rectangles here. We'll start out at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Gather up all three, We're gonna go in pocket three and four. And guess what, this little guy, I wanna do the same thing. I wanna get some three quarter inch. So this time we're starting out at three and a half. So I'm gonna count three columns to the right. One, two, three. That gets me at two and three quarters. Obviously, then two is next. Then one and a quarter would be next. And then three quarter. I won't even need all of them. I'm only going to use a total of seven. But the whole point of this exercise is that these tiny squares uh, nest perfectly with the cork squares that we've included, which are really, really sweet. They give us this just nice outdoorsy feel. So those will fit on there with a the perfect nesting. So you can just take all seven of the corks and all the squares that you created and just pop them into pockets seven and eight. You'll find them later. Make sure you dig down deep to find those. You have a small scrap, scrap again for the strips that remain. Um, the widest goes in three and four. Then you have two matching of uh, one inch, one and a quarter inch rather. Those go in one and two. And then you have two matching really skinny ones. Those go in three and four. And we've arrived at our cut aparts. 
So let's take this one and I want you to just peek again at the corner here. Notice that there is a uh, hash mark there, a plus sign. Everything to the outside of it needs to go. So if you're having trouble getting it into your trimmer, just rotate a turn. And I just kind of look at the top and cut a little shy of the line and I clean it up on my last rotation. So then I rotate and I look both at the top and the bottom of my trimmer, right where the blade, uh, the silver blade is on the edge here. And I can see pretty well to get that lined up at this point. And another rotation. I'm getting closer and closer to having a perfect 12 by 12 paper in front of me. And I'll just make sure this is nice and neat here. And I'll throw away my little uh, scraps. And I always start out with the narrow strips on the right. That makes for the easiest trimming. We'll cut here at 11. And then 10. Seven and a half. And four. And rotate so that the brown piece is on the right. That's again the narrowest piece. And our measurement here is 10 and a quarter and six. Now, if you get lost, just as a note, on step nine, you're going to see a picture of the cut apart and the pocket assignment for every single image. So, whatever is easier for you, if it's following along so you don't have to read anything uh, with the video, is great, or if it's better just to look at this to get your distribution. Um, this is going to go in pocket one and two. And this one in three and four. And then the brown one in one and two. Now let's separate these and then file the pieces. So again, our first cut here is 10 and a quarter and seven and a half. If you want, you can turn this into a tag right away. So I just kind of eyeball this with one eye open. I look at the, the margin here with the angle and I match it up to what's on the other sides. And now I have a perfect tag and we could be split going in three and four. Uh, this green one uh, with my favorite coat, there is no app for this, five and six. And then where to next, that's three and four. The next strip we'll trim. Uh, again, the small boxes should be on the right and we're gonna begin at 10 and a half. And then eight and three quarters and six okay so this one pocket seven and eight our little fox seven and eight also breathe deep one and two and this needs to be uh, split in half so i'm just going to trim that at one and a quarter the blue frame one and two and the green frame five and six the teal and uh, brown tone of strips those both go in one and two here we have our next sheet of cut aparts and it gets the same treatment on the perimeter so go ahead work your way around the piece until all of the edges are removed and then we'll cut them into individual art pieces together Okay, it's our practice again. Begin with the a narrow strip of that brick tone on the right at 10 and 3 quarters, 9 and a half, 8 and 3 quarters, 8, 6, and 3 and a half. We'll rotate, make sure you're these uh, so much of who we are reads right side up. And then you can trim this at six and a half. Place this in pocket one and two. And then this one in five and six. Here I'm going to put the green on the right. Uh, we'll cut at seven and a half, five, two and a half. Pocket five and six. This one, one and two. And this last one in seven and eight. A quiet time, five and six. Quiet stillness, five and six. 
Uh, this cute little guy, three and four. I think we're done trimming. So this is the outdoors, five and six. This narrow blue strip and the next one with the, just the tree on it that says walk in wonder. Both of those in seven and eight. And this brick one in three and four. Now that is the rest of the trimming. So you can set aside your trimmer, make sure you stabilize your, uh, your accordion pocket file before you move your trimmer. And then these are the scraps. It's not too bad, not too bad of a stack considering we started out with 16 sheets of paper and everything else is gonna be used. So yay for, for that. Um, again, just uh, take this, support it, get rid of the trimmer, lock the blade, and then lay, it on its, lay this on its back. It's not designed to stand without the trimmer. And we'll set this aside here. And here we have the remaining paper that we've sorted in advance. So take uh, the entire stack, just leave it all stacked up and put that to the left of the center of your workspace and slide the top sheet to the right. And that gives you the base for layouts seven and eight. Now why seven and eight? We're gonna, we're gonna work from the back to the front while we dry fit the pages. And that means just uh, putting all the pieces in their place and just checking our work. And when we're uh, finished with that phase, layout one will be on the top so that we can conveniently work our way back down the stack with our adhesive and our finishing touches. Then go back and add your photos. It looks pretty slick. If you haven't tried it, please try it with this collection. Now here on page five of my instructions, I've got layouts seven and eight pictured. And indeed, I've got the green here and the fox print here, and that matches what I'm seeing in the, the image labeled seven and eight. So all I need now is to empty the pocket for seven and eight. Let's take everything out. You really just gotta make sure you have those teeny tiny three quarter inch squares that we trimmed earlier. And again, that's not in the written instructions really until this point in the ingredient list. I just said these strips were trimmed to three quarters of an inch. Now I'm gonna take the, the three uh, brown rectangles that are all the same size and just start here on the left edge and line those all up. And the reason that these are trimmed to three and three quarter inches tall is because I'm able to distribute them nice and evenly across the left edge of the page, sort of like a film strip style. Next, take the blue, it's a pretty wide blue strip, and nest it with a pretty wide brown strip. Bring all our color in here and kind of create a zone, and we'll nest the walk in wonder with that. You'll find a couple of brown photo mats, dropping things here. I do like to hold all the pieces in my hand while I distribute them. It's just easier than picking them up off the table every time. And then um, on top of those, we should be able to nest a light blue. It should fit right in there and look beautiful. And then this narrow blue strip here across the bottom. Now this guy is going to be trimmed with scissors and don't spend a lot of time doing that. And if you don't want to trim it, it fits and nests perfectly on there. If you would like to trim it, you can. And I'll show you some more finishing touches on that in a moment. Now over here on this other side, I've got my blue strip nested onto green. And I have that going horizontally across the page here. And above it, two of the teal mats, really, really pretty. And next to those, this. I just didn't want to cover up anything else. <laughs> I trimmed this out as well with scissors, just a simple fussy cut. It's not real time consuming and he fits right here. And then same for the journaling prompt. I just uh, added a ribbon to the top, some of the brown. Um, this is a granulated ribbon with a grow grain edge. It's really, really pretty. Um, that's going to go on the bottom. Now, all of these little squares get placed on the layout with the exception of one. There are seven corks and there's eight squares of brown. On one of them, I topped this adorable charm with jute and then glued it onto this piece and put it right above the words walk in wonder over here on this side. Now, <laughs> I have to admit, as I was assembling my pages, I did not realize that buried inside my stuff was the second mountain charm. So if I were you, I would put that over on this side <laughs> and then just nest the rest of these squares and then distribute them onto the page in the manner I'm about to show you. So it's, it's really quite simple. Here again on the right side, a couple finishing touches. After fussy cutting this guy, I just punched, I pierced rather, I just pierced holes in here and I put the jute 
uh, ribbon fiber onto a needle so that I could easily enter the the cut apart. So after I threaded the the fiber through the hole I made, I pierced, I tied a knot at the end of it, and then I did the same on the other side, kept the knot on the front, and then just strung it around to the back and taped it. Easy. Now, this little uh, slot in here, you can make a slot like that with a craft knife and a ruler, or if you happen to have something like this, this is a badge punch. You can find these at a national online shopping website for a pretty reasonable price. And uh, that's what creates a nice little ribbon slot in there. That's what I used for this. Um, again, it's optional. You could just staple the ribbon on. And then I always like to add a little jute to the silver charms uh, just to draw the eye. And I added him right to the journaling prompt because uh, I thought it provided a cute little contrast. And again, you can take your second um, mountain range and then add it here as well if you'd like. Now on this side, um, here you can see what I talked about earlier with the charm and the jute attached. And then just three singles right in that border strip. They fit in there perfectly. And then on the lower portion, we've got, again, the badge holder punch uh, looped with just two short pieces of ribbon and then taped on the back. I've added these with foam adhesive as well as the, the cork nested squares. At this point, I will just take the green base of layout seven and slide it over and lay it on top of this. And then take the yellow and slide that over and now I've arrived at the base for layouts five and six pictured here. And once again, I can reach for my uh, pocket folio here, accordion pocket file, and empty everything from uh, these two pages. I like, again, to distribute from the hand whenever possible. Sometimes you do end up dropping a lot of things. <laughs> so we'll distribute these large pieces. The big fox print portion goes along the right edge, just flush there. And then we're going to flush from the top here, Mr. Raccoon. Now he was at the bottom of the print, but that's the fun part about cutting it. We can distribute the pieces differently to add variety from one layout to the other. Across the bottom, I added the chickadee here. So again, that was at the top. Now it's all switched around, which, you know, again, is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, right below this top section, we're going to add a brown strip nested with the words, so this is the outdoors. Now you're also gonna find two really, really skinny green pieces. Those are gonna be a transition color between the prints, the remaining prints, and the yellow base, okay? Just adds a nice little variety there. Then you can take one of the green uh, mats and place it vertically, and then next to it, a horizontal. There should be some printed pieces that are trimmed that will fit right inside. And this Every Forest Has a Story to Tell, that ends up kind of right in that spot there. Now in the middle of this page, and I actually used my grid ruler to measure to place this exactly centered at six inches, you know, centered at the middle. Now above it, I can add two nicely spaced green and below it, I can add my two brown. Now you have this section with the trees and that's gonna go up here. And this just directly below it with the journaling prompt next to it. And then this is gonna go front and center right here after you fussy cut. Some finishing touches here from our finished layouts. Um, I did my chain link uh, ribbon. It's just basically a loop of ribbon that only goes about this far looped and taped at the back. And a second piece is just kinda threaded through the first loop and taped at the back, and it creates a uh, dimension-free knot, which I really love. Then to that knot, I strung this charm with some of the jute and tied it on in a regular bow. Really brings the eye to it. I like the placement of it with the trees here, really kind of a clever combo. Now down uh, by this one, I simply took our book binding glue from the needle tip applicator and added the arrow. Rest of this is really straightforward. And then on the left side, um, I used uh, just a loop of ribbon taped to the back. So again, you don't have to have that special badge punch. It's just as kind of a fun thing. Look at little Sally, 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 Amanda right there. Oh, she did such a nice job. My Shannon, who, uh, who did this art, I love them. Uh, the feather attached basically to the feather. <laughs> so it's a feather button on top of a printed feather. Down over here, right next to the uh, foam mounted square with the ribbon, 
behind it, taped to the back, I've added a jute topped deer charm. Really sweet in that spot there too. Um, a little hard to see maybe in the printed instructions. So that's again, the advantage of having the chapters marked. You can easily look up whatever page you're working on to get the details in case you can't see. Now I'm gonna take the base of layout five, slide it on over. That's gonna expose two brick. And indeed, that's the base for layouts three and four here. So here we go. Grab our accordion pocket file, layout three and four. Okay, I see right away I've got a set here of three smaller light blue. I think it'd be nice and easy if I just laid those in their home. Again, that three quarter inch height gives me the ability to run the film strip again. Then we have this little piece with the chickadee that's gonna be flush on the right. And then I'm gonna add a brown narrow transition color next to it. Now, basically a, a quick tip for you, when I'm assembling this with adhesive, I glue this down with my ATG adhesive. And then I run the tip of my needle tip applicator right along the raised seam of the paper so that all I have to do is just drop this on top of the glue, push it down and it sticks perfectly and it's just the easiest. And then right here, we're gonna add this guy with about equal spacing from the edge left edge of the page between that space and this space should be matching, okay? And then in this area here, we can add our tag. And we can also add the journaling prompt. I added some arrows, one here and one here, as well as some ribbon. I'll show you more on that in a minute. Then on the left side, I'm gonna take this uh, pine cone portion, again, rearranging a print beautifully. That goes flush on the left edge followed by the color transition paper. And then you take those three brown rectangles and we're gonna run them across like we did here, except for this time we're going horizontally. Check your spacing. It can all be equal, so nice. Above it, the wide brown strip with the brick border. Above that, we'll take the two larger and look at how it fits, just like a puzzle nested with two teal, bringing in some nice color there. After you fussy cut this, you can add um, a feather. I sewed mine on, that's why I put a needle on my jute. It worked out great. And the buttons, the holes in the buttons are large enough for sewing. I'll pop that there. And to review those finishing touches, here's that badge punch threaded with the brown granulated ribbon. And then just attach the arrow with a book binding glue here and here. <laughs> And then after fussy cutting this shape, I sewed on the button and with the jute and then tied it into a bow. I really do want to draw the attention to that. And then speaking of bows, I just made a basic bow with the uh, brick colored grain ribbon tape. Use the rest of it up and it really is a nice little addition to this layout. And I'll slide the brick base of layout three onto layout four and then bring this over for my final double page spread and my final pocket, one and two, grabbing everything out of that. I got it all. I'm looking at the pictures, one and two, and I'm gonna begin with a brown strip here, right below Miss Chickadee, nested with this gorgeous teal border strip, and that's what's gonna bring in the color from the right. Then a light blue vertical and a light blue horizontal. The space is equal along the top edge. You can nest that then with the teal and once again, bringing that color from the other side to carry that over. The narrow blue strip will go under here. And then I did incorporate some of that uh, brick ribbon. I'll show you that in a minute. And above it, I added my fussy cut, you are my home and my adventure all at once. I love that. Okay, now on the right side, I've got two vertical tilted mats. So when you tilt them, make sure you don't let the corners of the mat, I'm going to do something that you shouldn't do here. Avoid the corner of the mat touching the top edge of the paper or the side of the paper or the other corner directly. I solve that by just tilting one away from the edges of the, of the base and then bring the other one tilted slightly and lowered a little bit and overlapping a little bit then you're avoiding uh, all the tangents that designers like to avoid. Along the right edge here, I'm gonna add 
my little stout here. He's so cute. That little look on his face is so expressive. Then a nested strip here. So we'll begin with the brown and then that fits right on top. And it creates a nice window here for that element and a journaling prompt. Uh, breathe deep, that's gonna go right here. If you want, you can fussy cut this and I'm just gonna demonstrate how fussy I get on this fussy cut because it really shouldn't take you that long. I'm leaving a little bit of margin around the printed frame here. And then once I get to the greenery, I'm just gonna kind of move around it again, keeping a margin and rounding off that corner there at the bottom. That took, I don't know, a few seconds, right? Not long at all. This is gonna go here. This will go right here. Easy, right? Um, on this piece, I do this a lot to rescue scraps. Just make an angled cut from the short edge, like a, and remove like a chevron or a V shape, a wide V. I mean, I'm shooting for a 90 degree angle-ish. <laughs> Doesn't have to be picky. And that just adds so much. And I layered that with a ribbon. That's all there is to it. So here we go with our finished. This was attached with foam adhesive circles, a uh, piece of stapled ribbon that's folded in half, again with foam to make it pop a little bit. Here, I sewed on the button and then added the jute topped charm here in this area, which I think again brings the eye to that. Uh, really beautifully. That charm is so fabulous. Now on this side, I used the badge punch, or you can, again, you can use a craft knife. You can use just a regular hole punch too, or skip it. <laughs> again, as a designer, you have all of the power, right? Um, I ran the ribbon through it and taped it to the back. And here is my layered. So I've got the paper in the background and then the ribbon above it. And then this attached with foam adhesive. Anytime you're doing some layering where you have a photo mat, just be careful not to add any adhesive uh, on top of the mat so you can still slide the photo in later. So all that's left for you to do now is if you want to do the, uh, the final touches later, just stack it up and put it back in the bag with all of the other ribbon and things that came in the collection for your final assembly. Or just do that right now and then grab your photos and get this layout done. And um, if you'd like to go to crops and scrap it with other people, Here's an idea, just get those layouts done to this point, put them in the bag, go to your crop. The only thing you need to bring with you is all your prepared pages for assembly and a stack of photos and a whole bunch of adhesive, maybe a little tape, uh, a journaling pen, and you're pretty much good to go. I just really, when I travel to scrapbook, I, I need very little because so much of this work is already done and my mind is free to chat with my friends and also uh, do the creative aspect of finishing these pages. So if you've never tried this method to completion before, I encourage you to do so. Glue everything down, get it done, and then bring your photos to the pages. They will always take center, center stage, which is really cool. That said, thank you very much for joining me for the Woodland uh, Special Release Page Kit. I hope you love these beautiful uh, layouts. They turned out so nice. And I look forward to seeing you in another class soon. If you haven't joined Club Scrap, be sure to check out our page kit and card kit options. I'd love to welcome you as a member. See you soon.